<laughs> I might be younger than some of you, but I've had a lot of experiences. I'm 18 years old. About a week after my 10th birthday, my uncle had taken his own life inside my grandparents' house, the one I'm currently living in now. After his death, I would refuse to go down into the basement where it happened. I would always hear unsettling noises, to the point in which I would feel so uncomfortable being in that home. The odd part is, it would only happen when everyone was in bed and I was home alone. As creepy as it was, I still had somewhat of morbid curiosity to go down there. Though of course, I could never bring myself to do it. There would be times I would hear very faint snarling and growling sounds. Other times, I would hear weeping. It was very disturbing. Then about six months after my uncle's death, my 17 year old cousin had died in a car wreck. One night, I was so upset over the deaths that I had stumbled down there without thinking about where I had went. I was so overcome with grief of emotions that I was bawling my eyes out. It got to the point where it was too much for me. I was sitting on the couch thinking about ending it all so I could be with them. Just when I was about to, I felt a hand on my shoulder and I knew instantly that it was my uncle. That moment made me realize that it was okay to continue on. That may have been a positive experience, but I assure you, it didn't get better in that basement and that house moving forward. One evening, I was up in my bedroom. My parents were again fast asleep when I heard a disturbing wailing again coming from the basement. I have a vent in my room and it connects directly down to the basement. I could hear these cries coming from the vent. I listened closer through the vent and I could have sworn I heard my name being whispered. Like an idiot, I thought maybe my uncle had returned and wasn't feeling well. So I swallowed my pride and went down into the basement so I could at least tell him that everything would be okay. As I opened the basement door and looked down the steps, at the end of these steps, I saw a figure for a moment's time. It wasn't my uncle. In fact, it was a black misty shadow and it slowly evaporated. It seemed to be there for a few seconds. Then it was gone within a blink of an eye. I then turned around, heard a distinct growl, then ran back up the rest of the steps and back into my room. Sometimes when I walk around the house, I can feel something watching and even following me. It's not always my uncle, but it definitely feels like something evil. It wasn't too long ago that me and my 21 year old cousin went to go see her dad. Now, this is the cousin that was in the wreck with the one that passed away. Jean, the 21 year old cousin, had told me that she had felt her sister's spirit with her before. While we were up late at night talking about her, we suddenly felt her presence with us. It was like she was sitting there and listening to us. Then, not too long ago, I was over at a friend's and was going to stay the night. We were in her room, talking about how she thought that maybe she had a ghost living in her house. Of course, I'm sitting there nodding my head. Then I felt something grab my necklace that I was wearing. So we got freaked out and ran to the living room and checked out my neck. Whatever had touched me left a great big red check mark on my neck. Then about 5 to 10 minutes later, it felt like something was grabbing my legs. I pulled up my pant legs and it had red marks all over my legs. So me and my friend decided to get out of the house and go bowling. Over at the bowling alley, the marks had turned white and disappeared. Well anyway, when we got back to our house, the marks returned and I kept feeling things grabbing me and following us occasionally. 
But the weird thing is, nothing was happening to her. And she told me that nothing like this has ever happened to one of her friends before. I was beginning to think that this bad presence in my home was starting to attach itself to me. So we decided to go to bed. While we were laying there, it felt like someone had come up and sat down on the bed between us. So I looked over and no one was there. I haven't been over to my friends ever since. A friend sent me this and suggested that I tell my stories. So here's one of them that I hope you enjoy. I have more if you'd like to hear. I live in Clinton, Illinois, which is a small town. We have a lake and that's pretty much about it. One night, I was out joyriding in the cemetery with a friend, as I like to do from time to time, and I had to go to the restroom. So, I went to this access area that is out in the country. I went to the restroom and then walked through the pavilion to look at the lake. I then came back to my car and then crawled into the driver's seat. I looked up and there was this little boy ducking behind a garbage can. He had red eyes that glowed like a demon's and teeth that were jagged and white. A black figure that looked like a medium sized dog was beside him and it was black. All that you could see was its red eyes. They both stared at us in the car and I felt fear overwhelm me. I quickly started the car and left. The next day I told my mom about it. She grew up in the area and she said that they often had Satan worshippers out there and that rumors were that a little boy was drowned and used as a sacrifice many years ago. My aunt, she says that the little boy was evil and therefore was put to death in that spot. I've tried to research this, but there are no records of any murder of a child taking place in this area, but I will never go there again, night or day. This is just one of the countless stories that I have. I have some photos too. I don't know if you can use this, but if you can, Feel free to. You may also edit if needed. Have you ever stayed at the Holiday Inn? You should, because this story is outrageous. In early of July 1999, I spent a work week there for a regional curriculum camp. I had originally been slated to share a room with other teachers on the first floor. However, the room was a smoking room and the odor was causing my asthma to flare up. So I was transferred to a room on the fourth floor. Buggered if I can remember the room number. When I retired on Monday night, I had not heard yet of the ghost or any legends. I was awoken three times during the night by the phone ringing. I was really ticked because no one was ever there. I vowed to speak with someone at the front desk about it. In the morning I learned about Tanya, the ghost. We all laughed at the story, thinking it was something to amuse tourists. Being WNY natives, we weren't going to be suckered by any such nonsense. I forgot to talk to anyone about the phone and decided not to bother. I fell asleep very quickly that night. I was awakened that night by the sensation that someone was staring at me from the left side of the bed. I have small children. My son often wakes me using the stare method. Now, I might have thought the ghost story was crap, but I wasn't going to test the theory by looking to see what was next to me. I said go away, I'm not going to look at you. I need my sleep. The sensation immediately left me and I slept the rest of the night quite peacefully. I awoke and went to my morning sessions without anything remarkable happening. However, I had to return to my room mid morning to fetch some papers I needed for the next session. The curtains were open on the doors leading out to my balcony 
which was not unusual. Housekeeping always opened the doors after cleaning. What was unusual was the number of small, sticky handprints all over the outside of the doors. These were no higher than my waist. I shook my head at the poor cleaning job. I was sure that the previous guest must have children with them and that the maid had failed to clean the prints off the glass. I wonder how hard it was to open the doors and give the glass a good cleaning, and then I hustled off to make my session. As the day progressed, I heard more tales of Tanya, like how she throws the poolside chairs into the pool during the night, etc. We giggled amongst ourselves, like good campers should when hearing ghost stories. None of us was going to admit we believed any of it, especially when our principals were listening. So, I was half joking while I was in my room, getting ready for bed, and said out loud, Listen, Tanya, I don't know how old you are, but I think you'll enjoy the books in the falls room. If you can read, you'll really like them. Even if you can't, lots of them are full of beautiful pictures that I bet you'll like to look at. Go there, instead of bugging me. I slept like a log, without any interruptions that night. When I went to breakfast the next morning, I told a colleague about my chat with Tanya. I mentioned that it must have worked because I had slept so well. I stopped talking when I saw my colleague's jaw drop and her face go white. I asked her what the matter was, and she took me over to the professor who was leading the sessions in the falls room. My colleague said to the professor, Tell us what you found in the room this morning. I listened, in stunned silence, as the professor described what a mess the room was. Books were thrown all over the place, the display table was in shambles, and her boxes of supplies had been unpacked and poorly repacked. In her own words, she said it looks like a kid went through everything and tried to put things back together, but couldn't manage. The professor had questioned the hotel staff about who had access to the room and all swore that no one had been in the room after we had left, and that the door had been locked until the staff left the professor in the morning. I apologized when she finished and explained that it had probably caused the mess by inviting Tanya to go there. We all laughed uneasily at that. Some other teachers on the fourth floor admitted the strange things, like the ringing phone, no caller, and the sensation of being watched. Suddenly, we weren't so sure that the story was something just to amuse the tourists. Were the phone calls, staring sensations, sticky fingerprints, and trash conference room related? There could be logical explanations, like incorrectly routed calls, poor cleaning, and staff mischief. Maybe Tanya was drawn to all of us warm, female, motherly-like type teachers. No male teachers that I know of on that floor. And yes, all of us are moms too. One thing is for sure, I'm far less skeptical of the paranormal than I was before, and I will admit, even to my principal, that something odd happened in that hotel. If you really want to check out the paranormal, then you have to go to the Grand Island Holiday Inn. You can pretend you came here to see Niagara Falls. I've had many experiences with ghosts and hauntings, all beginning around age 3. I'm now 28, and my connection to ghosts and spirits has only grown stronger with time. I suppose I should start with my earliest haunting. I was around 10 years of age, my parents had just divorced, and I was feeling alone and angry. I don't like to sleep with my bedroom door open, when I did. I felt I was being watched. One summer night, the air was hot and humid, and I had no choice but to sleep with my door open to get a cool cross breeze. I remember waking up sometime around midnight or shortly thereafter, feeling I was being watched. When I looked out my bedroom door, I saw a frightening sight. A figure with pure black skin, bright yellow eyes, and a cloak of red white 
in black hurlican like design, was staring at me, its hands on the door jamb, about to enter the threshold of my room. I screamed, saw its eyes widen in shock, possibly, and flee down the hall adjacent to my room. I even saw its robes fluttering after it, as it fled. My scream woke my family, who searched the room for the thing, lack of a better word, but found nothing. All the doors were locked, no windows were broken. I shut my door, put up with the heat, and it hasn't returned since. I've been told that the creature was a demon. I also found out that I was depressed at the time, and that may have been drawing it to me. I can still feel its presence when I think about it. I feel very frightened just remembering the experience. Thank you for letting me share my experience here. I wanted to share my own personal experience with you regarding my beloved Nana. She passed away in 1984. I took her death very hard and would go to visit her grave often. After my now ex-husband and I married in 1998, I became pregnant within the year. Since I knew that my ex and I would not stay together for the long term, and since our marriage was so troubled. I found myself up at Nana's grave many times, sometimes just to talk to her and ask her to guide me and to watch over myself and the baby. The first time I went to see her grave, I hadn't been there for nearly two years at the time. I was pretty certain of what row her stone was in, but not completely sure. I asked her out loud to help me find her, and so help me God if I'm lying. I ended up parking directly in front of her row. I thanked her and walked over to her grave, placing a single rose on it and crying. I was about six months pregnant with my daughter at the time, and I was very certain that her love for us would get us through the rough months ahead. Shortly after our daughter was born, my ex-husband and I were having major problems, major fights. It was obvious to the both of us that we would eventually split up permanently. We separated when my daughter was three months old, and I moved into an apartment with my infant. Shortly after, I could feel my Nana's presence. I never saw anything. I always asked her not to appear to me, as she knew I would be afraid. But her presence was unmistakable, especially in my daughter's nursery. It never frightened me conversely. I felt very comforted and protected. As a new mother, I took many photos of my infant those first few months. I never noticed until a friend pointed out to me that in one of them, which was a picture of the nursery, there is a vortex on the right, like a solid bar of white light, and to the left of that, an arch mist that almost looks like the shape of a rainbow, but you can see the wall right through it. Also, the picture of the room came out as if I had taken it from on the floor or close to the floor, and pointed the camera up. I would have never taken a picture from that angle, and I know I didn't. I cried when I realized that the vortex and the light are my Nana watching over her great-great-granddaughter and me. I don't think it's a coincidence, either, that the photo is focused on the rocking chair and the mist is right across it. I should also mention that shortly after my Nana passed away in the 80s, and my brother and I still lived at the home with my parents. That one night, I was up reading in bed and walked out into the kitchen. My brother was sitting at the kitchen table, shaken and white as a sheet, almost crying. A second later, my mother walked out of her bedroom and she was crying. They both professed at exactly the same moment that they had seen Nana appear to them and tell them not to worry and that she was all right. I might add that their bedroom were on opposite sides of the house. My mother also had a separate incident where she saw my Nana at the end of her bed. She wasn't at all afraid, she was comforted. I still visit my Nana just to say hello and it comforts me to know that someday I'll meet her again. Until then, I guess I'll just be comforted by her presence and know that her ghost 
is still looming around. And no matter what, I'm always a fan of Nana. How can you not like Nana? She's amazing. I miss you, Nana. But I'll see you again. One time, when I was a little child, I used to watch YouTube videos, even at the age I was. Nobody ever knew why I was watching YouTube videos, but they assumed because I liked them that it was really fun. Well, they were right. I did love YouTube videos, so much in fact that it got possessed by a ghost. The ghost suggested that I comment, like, share and subscribe, because if I didn't share this video of epic proportions, then my proportions would be disproportionate, and by the fraction of life, I will become someone else. Okay guys, so just ignore what I've been saying. Uh, thank you so much for commenting, liking, and subscribing, hopefully after you watch this video. Now uh, guys, let me know in the comment section below which story was your favorite. That last Nana piece was a nice little story to send you off guys on a high note. Uh, it was very bittersweet, it was very solemn, but I really liked it. Um, I honestly liked the demon story a lot. Uh, but there's so many stories to choose from that are really just enjoyable in general. So uh, comment, like, share, and subscribe. And uh, guys, hopefully you don't mind the extra ads on this video. There's going to be three more ads on this video than there usually is. I usually had one ad, so if you don't mind it, cool. Uh, I appreciate your shares. I appreciate your likes. I appreciate your subscriptions. But I'm tired, and I love you guys. So let me know in the comment section below what you feel about anything at all. So bye. Love you guys. See you in the next video. I'm sorry for the delay, as usual, and you'll see me again. Bye-bye.